The Late Night News, brought to you by Telstra. It doesn't cost much to stay in touch. And Hyundai's super stylish Sonata. Heading the Lace Night News, newlywed Michael Jackson's surprising Spring Sydney wedding, but still no sign of his new bride. How, how's your wife? Aboriginal Affairs Minister John Heron heckled by angry protesters, and the Australian Rugby League loses a last-ditch bid to stop Super League. The Late Night News with Sandra Sully. Good evening. First tonight, newlywed Michael Jackson has stepped out for the premiere of his film Ghost, without his pregnant new wife. The world's media, along with thousands of fans, packed the Sydney cinema precinct, hoping to catch a glimpse of the King of Pop and his bride, but they left disappointed. The rumours of Jackson's wedding had started before his first Sydney concert had even finished. By the time he returned to his hotel, speculation about when and where the King of Pop was going to exchange his marriage vows had reached fever pitch. Michael, is it three proud of getting married? Are you getting married? Within hours, his Los Angeles-based publicist confirmed Michael Jackson had tied the knot with 38-year-old mother-to-be Debbie Rowe. The ceremony taking place just after midnight in the presidential suite of the Sheridan on the Park. The news was too much for a couple of dedicated young fans. What do they think it was set up? She's pregnant. My life is over. Media organisations worldwide descended on Sydney for a glimpse of the newlyweds. But they got the wrong woman. The images beamed across the world were not of his new wife, but his Australian publicist, Di Rowley. Jackson today remained holed up in his hotel, but emerged late this afternoon with a young friend for a private tour of Taronga Zoo. How you doing, Michael? How does it feel to be married, Michael? You must be very happy. Is it a happy day for you? Are you very pleased? <laughs> how, how's your wife? Jackson simply refused to comment on his marriage. The shrug of the shoulders, again leaving some doubt about the wedding. Lovely. He spent an hour playing with the natives. Michael. Then late tonight, he arrived at the cinema and was greeted by thousands of fans for the screening of his film, Ghosts. <laughs> A host of celebrities were on hand for the premiere. It was Michael's first look at his film and again his new wife did not attend. The film is a collection of video wizardry with Jackson making all the right moves. The latest rumour is the newlyweds will make their first public appearance at the start of the Melbourne leg of his history tour. Michael Reed, 10 News. A taxi driver has died after he was stabbed in the neck during an attack in inner suburban Sydney this afternoon. The taxi driver was stabbed in the neck and chest by a man who took his money bag at Dremoyne in the inner west. It's understood the 27-year-old chased his attacker up the street before collapsing. When I looked up, I seen a cab come up the road here chasing a man. A cab hit the man and then ran into the pole. They got up and run off down the street. Two other fellas chased him. And I stayed with the cab driver. The man died a short time later in hospital. Police are now hunting his killer. Three people, including a twin brother and sister, were killed today when their light plane crashed into a paddock and exploded at Bungendore, east of Canberra. Ambulance crews arriving on the scene were held back by the fierce flames. The single-engine Cessna lifted off from a private airstrip at around 2.20 this afternoon. On board, three young people in their 20s, a girl from the Canberra suburb of Red Hill and twin brother and sister aged in their mid-20s from a well-known Bungendore family. It's believed the group was heading for Warren, west of Dubbo, for a weekend away. The private grassed airstrip was only a short distance from the crash scene, the plane coming down in an open field, bursting into flames on impact. All three died instantly. Their bodies remain in the wreckage tonight while air crash investigators start their inquiries. But those who witnessed the crash believe there was nothing wrong with the aircraft, blaming the conditions at the time. Police have declined to give any details on the identity of those on board the aircraft. The Bureau of Air Safety has tonight cordoned off the area to begin a detailed inspection of the plane. Andrew Messenger, 10 News. Aboriginal Affairs Minister John Heron confronted angry protesters in Canberra today. Demonstrators called him a racist after he delivered a major speech on Aboriginal policy. Senator Heron chose not to use another exit after his Lions Memorial Lecture 
detailing the government's directions in Aboriginal affairs. Look after a wander and uh, donate your you're time. Look after Work it out. You're a racist. Your Aboriginal you're blood is on your hands. A wall of police pushed the demonstrators back as they attempted to blockade the minister's path. One man was quickly dragged off the roadway and forcibly led away. In the lecture, the senator admitted the brutality visited on Aborigines after European settlement. It's imperative that we have the courage to acknowledge the injustices of the past. As the 30 protesters attempted to disrupt proceedings, the minister pressed on, formally announcing the army's help in providing water supply for remote communities. It is envisaged that the Army's role will involve design, project management and participation in pilot projects on the ground. But the Northern Territory sees that as no real solution. One has only to look at the limited capability that's there to see that they could make uh, a very little effect. Senator Heron talks about empowering Australia's Indigenous peoples, but outgoing ATSIC chief Lois O'Donoghue says he's come up with whitefellas solutions without proper consultation. The opposition was looking for more. I would have expected a bit more meat in Senator Heron's uh, document, and it's just not there. Hold on, Jono, tell me. The inquiry into the Wall's End mining tragedy in which four miners were killed has been given top priority by the New South Wales government. But the widow of one of the men is demanding to know how the accident was allowed to happen. I'm pretty devastated. This is a terrible tragedy that never should have happened. And I'm, I'm very sorry. A lonely Lynn Batterham bravely battles her grief. She says her late husband Eddie would have expected her to after their 14 years together. I think when you find your soulmate in this lifetime, you're very lucky. And I feel very lucky to have shared the years that Eddie and I had together. 48-year-old Eddie Batterham was deputy in charge of the three other miners who died, one only 19. They were preparing a new section when their continuous miner cut into a disused shaft. Suddenly, thousands of litres of water from the shaft engulfed them. Several suffered severe head injuries as they were swept back more than 200 metres. It's understood deadly gases from the disused mine are the likely cause of death, not drowning. A miner who did survive the tragic accident watched helplessly as one victim died while crawling away, trying to stay below the gas. With mining in the problem shaft now likely to resume early next week, the miners' union has expressed concern that there's an ongoing risk, that something similar could claim more lives. It believes that we hold, we have hold into an abandoned um, uh, mine shaft, uh, or mine workings. They were healthy people and um, they didn't deserve to go like this. They're it's not fair. Harry Potter, 10 News. A 23-year-old man appeared in a country New South Wales court today charged with a double murder at a Sydney brothel more than two years ago. Accused of stabbing and shooting two men, two women, he was refused bail. The Valentine's Day murders of 1994 were particularly savage. At the time, police said 40-year-old Kerry Pang, the owner of Kerry's Oasis Massage Parlour, was stabbed 18 times in a frenzied attack. The mother of five had her throat slashed and was shot in the head as she ran screaming down a hallway. 26-year-old prostitute Fatma Ozanol was also working at the time. As she sat on a couch in the front room, she was shot three times in the head with a .22 calibre rifle. Just before the killer fled, he set fire to the Gladesville brothel, destroying the building within minutes. Murder cases like these are never closed. A task force investigating unsolved homicides has been gathering evidence since February 1994. Nearly three years after the murders, major crime squad detectives from Sydney travelled here to Orange in the state's central west. Late yesterday, they moved in on 23-year-old Ronald Lewis Waters and charged him with two counts of murder. Waters made a brief appearance at the Orange Courthouse today. The labourer entered no pleas to the murders and made no application for bail. He'll face court again in Sydney next week. Mark Gibson, 10 News. Two Victorian men have been arrested over a bank hold-up in Adelaide during which a security guard and a customer were shot. 
The men are now being questioned by police after their arrest in Melbourne this afternoon. Police have also recovered $350,000 in cash and firearms. The security guard and customer were shot when two men held up the crowded suburban bank in Adelaide's north. Both patients are in a satisfactory condition. The High Court has rejected an appeal by the Australian Rugby League to overturn an earlier decision and give Super League the go-ahead. It was the ARL's last chance to stop Super League from setting up a rival competition next year. The decision ensures that there will now be two competitions with the final battle for Rugby League to be fought out on the football field. The multi-million dollar legal stoush has taken two years and follows the resignation earlier this week yeah, of Chief be. Executive John Quayle. And of course that story in detail coming up in Sports Tonight right after the late night news. Well, when the news continues, suspected and convicted pedophiles to be listed on a national register. Former high flyer turned con man Peter Foster jailed for 18 months. And stars shine at the Australian Film Awards. And the winner is Jeffrey Rush for Shine. <laughs>